Okay, today we're going to be dealing with radicals with higher roots. Now we know everything there is to know about square roots, and the rest of these roots work similar, except that in a square root, I need to multiply this times itself to get this number. I need to multiply a number times itself to get 125. You can't do that. But for the third root, that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to multiply a number times itself three times. Okay, so 5 times 5 times 5 is 125. So the third root or the cubed root of 125 is 5. Now, the third root of negative 64, what? You, you, you said I couldn't have a negative in a root? That's not what I said. <laughs> that's probably what you remember, but that's not what I said. I said you can't have a negative in a square root. Okay, you can't have a negative in a third root. You can have a negative in any root that's odd. So I can have a negative in a root that's 3 or 5 or 7, or 9, on into infinity. And so, give me a second, and I'll come back to that one, and I'll show you why that's correct. But the third root of 64 is 4, and the third root of negative is negative, so it's going, our answer is going to be negative 4. And the fourth root of 81 is 3 which means 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 is 81. So the fourth root of 81 is 3. Now, would you like me to go on and do the fifth root or the sixth root or the seventh root? I don't think so. If you understand these three right here, you understand how this works. And let's get back to this. The fourth root of negative 16, well, the fourth root of 16 is 2 but you can't have a negative root if the root is positive, okay? So I told you if it's negative, that's fine. But if it's the second root, that is the square root, or the fourth root, or the sixth root, can't do it. So be mindful of that. Actually, and there's no solution like that says, actually, this is not going to be on the test. It's not going to be in your homework. It wasn't the last time, but I do think it's something good for you to know in case you encounter something like an SAT, ACT, or ASVAB. I don't know what's in those uh, uh, tests. So it's just something, you don't need to practice it. Just keep it in the back of your pocket and pull it out if you need to. But anyways, I said anyway, I said I was going to get back to this negative one. Let, let, let's see how that works. Okay, if we pull negative 64 apart, it's going to look like this. It's going to be negative 4 times negative 4 times negative 4. Now, I know you could have done negative 4 times 4 times 4, but guess what? This is the third root, or the cubic root, 3. Remember for the square root, we pulled out the twins. Well, guess what we're going to be pulling out for the third root? That's right, the triplets. <laughs> and guess what we're going to be pulling out for the fourth root? The quads. And for the fifth root, the quints. And that's the way this works. And so, anyways, to make this work, it can't be negative 4 times positive 4 times positive 4, but it can be negative 4 times negative 4 times negative 4, right? 4 times 4 times 4 is 64, and negative times negative is a positive, but negative times negative times negative is negative, okay? So negative 4 is a cubic root of negative 64, and that's the, how that works. Now, let's pull out some more triplets. So we have the cubic root of 54, and the first thing we need to do is pull apart that 54, turn it into prime numbers, and voila, 
we have triplets. But before we deal with those triplets, and it's going to be in the same fashion, but before we do, just a note of warning. Keep your eye on that number there. Make sure you know that you're dealing with a square root, a cube root, a fourth root, a fifth root, or whatever you're dealing with, or you're going to get these answers wrong, obviously. A lot of times, especially when you're mixing stuff, that three can drop off, and then you're trying to grab the twins. Oh, there's just two, just, you know, these threes. I'm going to grab these threes and leave two and three behind. Be careful. Okay, we found the triplets, and we're going to take the triplets out, and this is what's going to be left, just the two, not in a square root, but in a cubic root. So let's write that properly. Okay, and our solution is three times the cubic root of two. And, you know, I just saw another thing that I need to warn you about. When you see that number there, make sure you know what it applies to because even in the books they can get a little sloppy and sometimes that three looks like oh this is three with an exponent of three times the square root of two you see how that can look like <laughs> that if you're not careful it can look like that and um as careful as they are in the books Boy, I have seen so much stuff to me that I really have to stare at. It's not clear what they're driving at. So be real careful about that. But let's do another one. 3 times the 4th root of 48. Now we've grabbed the twins and we've grabbed the triplets. We haven't grabbed the quads yet. Although I did warn you that we probably were going to be grabbing quads and we might even grab some quints on the way. But... In any event, I, I think it's starting to get uh, just real familiar how to do this, even though we haven't done it before. So what are we going to do? Come on, tell me, what are we going to do? Come on. We're going to tear that 48 apart. And that's 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. When you bring your radical down, make sure that you bring that 4 down, that it's the 4th root of that. And so the 4th root of it, we're looking for quads. We found some. And we're going to take those out. And I hope you're starting to see why I take the twins out, take the triplets out, take the quads out. Because for roots, for roots I think it's a little bit harder than it needs to be. But when you start talking about the third root or the cubic root, you know, it, it, it's hard to think about that. What's two times two times two? Uh, well, it's eight. Okay, okay. what's three times three times three? Um, well, three, nine, and three. See, it's harder to think like that. When I start saying four, what is four? I think it's 64. Anyways, what's five? Um, it's 125. Okay, well, what's, the, what, what's uh, five to the fourth power? I think it's 625. <laughs> I'm not going to even guess, okay? I'm going to get it wrong. So anyways, anyway, uh, you can see how much easier this is. You don't have to figure out what a number is with what exponent. I'm just grabbing quads. So I grabbed my quads. I took them out, brought the two down here. Remember the quads become one. The twins become one. The triplets for the cubic root become one. The quads for the fourth root become one. Okay, they're always going to become one. One, two. I took four twos out, but I only bring one over here. Okay, so let's see. We have two times three, fourth root of three. Remember, we had a three left over. Want to make sure you bring that down. Don't get sloppy on me. And by the way, when I circle the quads, I don't know, that, that just seems to make it real easy for me to see what I took out and what was left behind. So, we have 6 times the 4th root of 3. Now let's try this with 
a higher root and throw some variables in there. Okay, we have the fifth root of x to the 25, y to the 17th, and z cubed. And for this problem, we're going to leave out the coefficients because I think we've worked with coefficients enough to know uh, how they should work. Uh, you know, if you want to throw a pretend coefficient in there, let's throw 32. 32 would be 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 five times, and so we could take the twos out, and that would be one, two. But we didn't put 32 in there, but that's how that would work, and I'm sure you've already seen that that's how that works, because it works the same way with the cube root, it worked the same way with the fourth root, and we've done all those, so we don't need to do that uh, with the fifth root. But variables are a little funny, like they were the last time with the, uh, what was it, what were we messing with? We were messing with square roots. Yeah, so with a fifth root of x to the 25, well, I'm just going to divide that by 5, right? With square roots, we divided it by 2. With the cube root, we divided it by 3. Actually, I don't think we did that, but that's what we would have done. But with the fifth root, we're going to divide the exponent by the root, and 25 divided by 5, so I can take 5 out of 25. When I say take 5 out, remember we have the fifth root. I can take quince out 5 times, and 5 divided by 25 is 5. And for 17, well, 17 is not divisible by 5. But as you saw with the square roots, those numbers weren't always divisible either. And we had numbers left over. Well, can I take 5y's out? Yeah. Can I take 10y's out? Yeah. Can I take 15y's out? Yep. Yeah. Can I take 20y's out? No, I can't. So as, as you see, I take these out in, in groups of 5. And so I'm going to take 15 y's out. And 15 divided by 5 is 3, y cubed. I hope that was pretty easy to follow. I mean, we're taking uh, y to the fifth out, you know, three times. Okay that makes more sense. Again, you know, if you want me to do the baby steps, you know, write this as x times x times x times x 25 times, y times y 17 times, and z times itself 3 times. And put that all under the fifth root. And then start pulling them out 5 at a time. Now you could do that, but I just think it's a lot easier to divide. And it's a little bit more difficult, you know, 17 divided by 5, I don't know, that's that's fifth grade math. So that's uh, 3, and I'm going to have two y's left over, and the answer is 3 remainder 2, okay? Remember how we did that in the fifth grade? It paid off, didn't it? <laughs> it finally paid off. Remember you just hated those remainders? Well, now I bet you just love them. Anyway, uh, let's see. How many fives can I get out of three? I think that's pretty obvious that I can't get any. So all of my z's are going to remain. And I've taken everything out. So let's put that radical behind the x and y. And as you bring this radical down, make sure that 5 continues. Don't drop that 5 off and it looks like your answer is to the square root and you get it wrong on the test and you go, well, you know what I meant. Doesn't work that way, okay? Bring that fifth root down. You've been warned. I think this is about the third time you've been warned. But anyways, all of our x's have been brought out, so we don't have any x's in here. All of our y's were brought out except for 2. There was a remainder of 2. So like I've said for about the second or third time, 
our remainder is y squared and our z's we have all of them left so that'll be z cubed and our answer is x to the fifth y cubed times the fifth root of y squared z cubed that is our answer and so now you know how to deal with higher radicals do your homework